We'll start this video here so you can see what this interesting space gun thing actually does. And I'm going to warn you in advance, it's extremely noisy. If you've got headphones on or you've got your speakers turned up high, I'd recommend turn them down a little bit at the moment because this is about to make a lot of hissing noises. As you can probably see the haze in the air, it's about to do something nefarious. Let's begin making noise. So this is at its low setting and it's basically... Pumping out lots of haze, it's basically a smoke machine, but in convenient handheld format, but it's not sold for that particular purpose. Um, I'll turn this off, so you can actually hear what I'm saying, and then we'll take it to the bench, and I'll tell you what it's for, what it's sold as, I'll read you some of the weird instructions that come with it, and then we'll take it to bits, and see if we can modify it as well, to slow the pump down. So uh, let's go back to the bench this right now. So here it is up close, uh, I'll show you the controls. You screw the bottle on the bottom here of the liquid. Oh, a little puff of smoke because it's still hot. Um, it has a knob here that adjusts the speed at which the pump is pulsed. It's a solenoid pump. You've got a little green light to show when it's ready to go, though, to be honest. As soon as it, the, it's ready to go, it starts spraying. And you've got a simple on-off switch for actually controlling it. And it's very clear this is a heater like a smoke machine inside and it's got some LEDs in the end that you actually had a choice in the listing of blue or white LEDs and this was being sold as white blue light nano sprayer steam for fogging disinfectant clean paint sprayer uh, porous heat dissipation the device releases a large number of nano sprays large capacity bottle and they're saying compatible material, exterior paint, interior paint, is absolutely not suitable for paint at all. Uh, rated power 1,200 watts, it does tally up. Spray diameter 26 nanometers, don't know. Um, that's about it. Uh, the price of this one was about £30. It cost a pound for shipping, which is fine in the UK. Uh, there, some sellers are selling it with uh, a bottle of disinfectant, standard disinfectant that they recommend diluting with water at considerably higher prices, but I'm not sure it's suitable for that because if it is using, well, it is using, I can feel the heat. If it's using the heat, then some disinfectants will be damaged with it, particularly the benzalkonium chloride ones. Just make sure this is unplugged because I'm about to open this up. The instructions... Helpfully say, and this really hints at what it's actually for. It says method of use. Insert the power cord plugs. Indoor, the rated sockets press the conduction red start twist. After waiting for machine preheating, heat about 40 seconds. When the green light is lit, the spray gun can begin gushing anion nano steam. And it goes on to say, adjusting knob of the anion of the instrument design patent device, adjustable steam anion nanoparticle size of water molecules, Clockwise particles, larger water molecules out of the fog too big. The water particles, smaller clockwise, also small amount out of the fog. Normal use advice is adjusted for blue mist state. It then says, please be sure to add distilled water. And it goes on to describe how you can spray ladies' hair with it for hair treatments. And I get the feeling this is only intended to spray steam for, for ladies' hair. Anyway, let's, uh, let's open it up and see what's inside and see if we can modify it. I quite like the fact that it, uh, it acts like a smoke uh, machine but with a trigger. So let's make sure, let's see what size these screws are, if they're all the same size or not. Come on, screw. There are other types that are USB rechargeable, I think, and they contain a battery, so they're obviously not heating those ones. They, they make a big thing about the fact that it is better suited to disinfection because the uh, the cold sprayer ones that are used must just be acting like a little pump and spraying the liquid out through a nozzle, just like a hand sprayer. Uh, they make a thing about saying that, uh, unlike this type, theirs don't damage the disinfectant. And that would that would be true, but this one will result in much higher atomization. Have I got all the screws out here? I think I've got more or less all the screws out. Yep, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One more here. It's got a lot of screws. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. But that is us, ready to go. Okay, that's quite neat. Let's put the handle over there. Where, oh, 
first thing I'm noticing here is that the electronics are potted in resin. That's disappointing. Uh, I can see what looks like an electrolytic capacitor sticking up here. I thought this might be simply a resistor charging a capacitor until via a diode until it reaches a certain threshold. And these solenoid pumps are actually effectively just run half waves, so they have a diode in series. So that would make sense if they used a thyristor. And they triggered the thyristor by a voltage threshold that then discharged that capacitor and just fired it for a certain length of time. So that's what I'm guessing is inside. Oh, you know what I could do? Do you know what I could do? I could try uh, adding a resistor in line with the potentiometer down here. Uh, hold on, what is that? What value is that potentiometer? I'm going to guess it's going to be a fairly high value. 100k, maybe even higher. Maybe even higher. Uh, 200k. So what if I added another resistor? I'll tell you what, I'm just going to do that right now. I'm going to solder on. I'm going to add a resistor in that, and we'll see if it affects the pump speed. That means this is going to be red hot. Uh, this material here, I'm hoping that's ceramic fiber. It's unfortunate that China still uses asbestos quite widely, and there have been reports of products coming out from China with asbestos in them, so there's no guarantee. Uh, if it is asbestos, it will probably be chrysotile asbestos, which is the one they use, which is not as harmful as the other asbestos is, but it's not ideal. So uh, I'll proceed with caution with this, although I think I'm going to end up... I've, I've just noticed something. That is not like... That's got screws holding that shut. I'm going to have to go deeper into this. This is odd. Uh, right, tell you what. I'm going to pause momentarily. I'm going to uh, I'm going to add that resistor and then uh, I'll try it out. See if we can see what speed it goes, if we can actually control the speed. And then after that, uh, I'll let it cool down a bit. And then we'll actually strip everything to bits here and I'll reverse engineer it. Okay, first experiment done. I've added a resistor substitution box in line between that to increase the value of that. And the answer is... No, it doesn't. That, uh, if I set this to... Keep in mind that this is all live at mains voltage. If I set this to... Low value... Yeah, it's basically speaking... It's working the opposite. The lower the value of this, the, the resistance, the lower the speed and the higher the resistance. So effectively open circuit, it runs at full speed. So I'm not sure what the circuitry they're using for that in there is. Uh, it could just be a potential divider of some sort. But uh, if it means that if I wanted to actually make that slower, I'd have to redesign the circuitry a little bit. But that's okay. It was worth experimenting with. And just before MD asks where I got this resistor substitution box, it came from Tandy decades ago. It's very old. I made a video about it, uh, but it's not uh, available these days. It's, a, it's quite an odd thing. Right, I'm going to let this cool down, and then I'm going to start going into it and uh, re reverse engineering it. So uh, I'll be back in a moment. This thing is very hot, and it's staying hot for a long time. It's got a good high thermal mass that is just burning to the touch. Uh, but I've taken the uh, temperature sensors off, the, well the thermal switches off, and I've uh, taken the circuit board off the front that, that is held in place by the friction of the LEDs. There's nothing really stopping that pushing back and touching the metal casing of that, although it's not, it's not, nothing is grounded because it is double insulated, but it's a bit of a sloppy design. But let's take a look at the schematic at the moment while that cools down. Then I'll try and get a wee bit deeper into that. So let's uh, close in a bit on this. So live and neutral come in, and they go through a double pole switch. I think it's double pole. Switch. Yes, it is double pole. Uh, but it's also got a little neon indicator in it just to show when it's on. The first thing it does is it feeds the heater via a 190 degrees Celsius uh, switch. That's actually lower than the standard smoke machine. But at the point it gets up to 140 degrees Celsius, the second thermal switch closes and that enables everything else. That brings on the little green neon indicator. It brings on the LED module in the front, which is perplexingly crap. Uh, and it brings on the pump control module. So a couple of wires go into the... Well, the, the pump control module has... Uh, 
basically got six wires going into it. It's got live and neutral going into it. It's got the two connections coming out to the pump and it's got the two connections going out to the potentiometer. What's really odd here is that the circuit board in the front has one diode for rectification, so quite flickery. And then it's got a circle of LEDs that I thought initially were all in series. And then it's got all these resistors, which I thought would all be in series again, just to spread the dissipation. But no, it's not. It's got basically the diode there. And then it's got five resistors in series, the series of five LEDs. They could have put all those LEDs in series and it would have made it so much more efficient. That would have let them actually put a few of these resistors in series as well. They could have put left them in the same place around the circuit board, but by putting them all in series, the LEDs are a maximum of about 15 volts, so it doesn't matter if it's 110 volt or 240 volt, they could uh, just adjust it accordingly. But uh, that would have meant they, they could have run the LEDs at much higher current. It's a very odd and inefficient design. It's strange. It's almost like it's designed for low voltage use, but uh, but it's not low voltage. Very odd. For reference, the pump in use is a standard saw noise pump. That's why it makes that chapping noise. And uh, those usually have a diode in series with them um, for mains operations, so it only operates for half the cycle. But in this instance, that little module there is just firing in a series of pulses that you adjust the speed. And the higher the resistance, the higher it is, and the lower the resistance, the slower it is, which is the opposite of what I was, ex what I was expecting. But anyway, that's more or less it. It's not super complicated. I'm going to let it cool down because I really want to take a look at that heater block if I can get it open. Uh, but it's red hot at the moment, so I'm going to just go and have a bite to eat. And then I'll come back to it once it's hopefully cooled off a bit. Remove the suspicious fibrous material from the outside. And then try and open it and we'll see what we can see inside. Tea has been partaken of. Um... It was soup for those interested, lentil and bacon soup, and this has now cooled down to the point that I can actually pick it up and hold it. So I've unwrapped it. It had this uh, thermal insulation. I think it is ceramic fibre. Hard to say, but I think it is ceramic fibre. Nice that they've actually cut it out for the uh, thermal switches. But um, the unit itself has a fairly thick... Silicon rubber hose going in with the fiberglass braiding over it, which is odd. Uh, it's got the heat element going in with the spot welded terminals in the end, and that is basically just potted right into this aluminium by the look of it, I think. Uh, the inlet port is uh, glued in and sealed in with a... Uh, RTV, room temperature vulcanizing silicon. And likewise, the one at the other end appeared to have been too, and I took it out. It's got this strange, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not, this is a standard clear silicon washer, but it's kind of like got all stained. Very strange. But uh, let's open this up. I really like the fact that this has the pillars for the thermal switches in it. It's very nicely made. Now, worst case scenario here is if I unscrew these screws and the lid doesn't come off, it may actually be glued on. Oh, I can actually see it lifting up already. It might be glued on with RTV, room temperature vulcanizing, high temperature silicon, but we'll find out when we open it. So far, so good. I can tell from looking down the end, there is something like it. It doesn't look like a standard smoke machine, which normally has a copper tube spiraled around a heating element and then all potted in uh, Aluminium. It looks different. And if it's what I think it is, it might be worth every penny of this unit alone. Oh, this, oh, it's just popping off. It's just popping off. What have we got? What have we got? We have, hold on, let's zoom down in this. We have a convoluted path. Uh, aluminium casting. Uh, with the silicon seal around here, which is kind of spilled with that red stuff. Oh, there, it can pop out as well. That's nice. Uh, so this is very reminiscent of a theatre hazer. Um, in the sense that it's got a very large void going through. And if you use this as an ordinary smoke machine, something like this would generally result in a lot of spitting out the front. I have noticed this machine does tend to spit quite a bit. 
um, when it goes through surges because what can happen is that if you tilt the machine up the way, liquid pools at the back and then when you tilt the machine down away, it starts pouring through and it surges out. But this is reminiscent, very reminiscent of a theatrical fogger, not a fogger, but a hazer. Particularly a type that uses glycerol. I'm just going to zoom back out here to try and make things more manageable. And with a theatrical hazer, um, they tend to have a larger path like this because the glycerol, with the continuous trickling through, it does tend to sort of block them up after a while. And what would happen is that you'd have the pump, uh, like this pump here, just pecking, much like this one is, just putting tiny portions of the water and glycerol out. But it would be combined. There'd be a, a aquarium-style pump with a sort of Y piece that would then blow that in here as tiny little pockets of um, liquid sort of bubbling it into it. So it would uh, atomize quite finely. And the way this has uh, the two temperature sensors, it's got the, what are the temperatures? 190 degrees Celsius for the heater which is, it uh, seems to be potted right in. And then it's got the uh, 104 degrees Celsius for the enabling of the pump. That means this would run pretty much continually uh, because it would always be above the temperature of the enabling the output. And uh, with a haze machine, that means you just continually have a, a haze coming out into a fan of the glycerol. So this is interesting. This is a very, very useful heater block. This and the pump are really, and maybe the module for controlling it, are actually the basis, effectively, of a proper haze machine. That's quite interesting. The one thing I'd add is there is no thermal protection if the 190 degrees Celsius uh, switch fails in a closed state. So the one thing I'd add is perhaps on this side... Just a thermal fuse in intimate contact with this, rated for 250 degrees Celsius or 300. Just a last resort to actually kill the power if this block overheated. But that's very interesting. It's a really nice construction. It is not what I was expecting. That's very interesting. So, I guess ultimately, it looks like this unit is designed for, for generating steam continually. I'm not sure it's original intended application. It does hint that it is for beautifying hair with anionic water droplets and stuff like that. But I'm not sure how much of that is hype. But it certainly it, it seems to have other uses. And the lower temperature does also almost hint that with certain sterilising liquids, it would definitely be able to actually put them through. Uh, without breaking them down too much but the listing that says paint the paint would just instantly fill this up it would just set as it went through and it would block this up completely I'm not sure why they put that they probably just copied another sort of uh, low volume paint spare type listing but there we go interesting stuff well worth taking to bits now I'm going to reassemble it um, because I think it's quite a neat little thing so um, yeah that was good. I really enjoyed taking that to bits. It's quite a novel thing, almost pretty much like a handheld fog machine. Very neat little device and well worth uh, getting and taking to bits like this.